Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Profit Minds podcast. My name is Dr. Stephen Kirch, and I'm the creator of the Profit Minds Growth System, a unique blend of profit growth, productivity acceleration, and building business process for scale. Every episode, I interview entrepreneurs and small business owners from around the world with a unique story to tell. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Today, my guest is Joshua Ramsey of JRCMO, and we'll be talking about the difference between a fractional CMO, an ad agency, and a marketing consultant. Welcome, Josh. Hey, Dr. Steven. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So I, all of my listeners know that, that I love, because my story is very con- convoluted, I love to hear the stories of how people got to where they are. Um, so, so tell us your story. How, how did you get to be a fractional CMO? Yeah. Uh, so back in the nineties, uh, I just enjoyed doing sales. So I got into selling media like uh, transit advertising billboards. I did a uh, work for a large company doing uh, newspaper sales um, ads in the newspaper. Uh, magazines and so forth. So any type of media, traditional marketing that could be out there is what I did. Um, From there, it kind of evolved because I couldn't ever retain clients. Uh, The ads just didn't click and I didn't really understand in my young career what those ads needed to be and why I couldn't retain clients. So I was always selling, 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 but never able to retain. Uh, became really frustrating. So I finally moved into the world of uh, ad agency. And in the ad agency world, it really changed my paradigm to be able to understand why we create ads and what those ads look like. Uh, So I went to work for a top 100 ad agency in uh, about 2003. And from there, in the first six months, I moved from junior project manager to senior project manager. And then within about a year and a half after that, I became VP of sales and marketing. It just came to me. I just understood it. Hmm. In 2009, everyone remembers the great economy of 2009. Oh, wow, yeah. And uh, I, I ended up through uh, just the way things work. I had to start my own ad agency. So in 2009, I started an ad agency and continued to run that. And then kind of fell into what you call fire retire, where everything was set up and running really smooth. So in about the end of 2018, I retired and uh, started kind of writing a book and thinking about where I wanted to go, I looked at the marketplace and realized there was a huge gap in the market for fractional chief marketing officer. There was always a fractional CFO, but I never saw anything in the way of marketing of who can come in and work with a company and how do they take that company to the next level. So that's the, the brevity of my story and kind of the growth of where I've been and where I'm at now. Okay, so so explain to our listeners and and to me, right? What's the difference between uh, a, a fractional CMO? I mean, again, everybody knows what a fractional CFO does, but right. but a fractional CMO. What's the difference between that and having an ad or marketing agency or a marketing consultant? What 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 distinguishes one for the other, and and why would somebody want to choose one or the other? Um, yeah. So it's a great question. And a lot of people have that question, especially when they hear fractional CMO wondering, what is this? How does it work? And the easiest way that I explain it is when you go to a company like an ad agency, the ad agency usually has uh, something that they're good at. Let's say it's link building or it's content building. Uh, they have something that they like to focus on. The problem is, is that they're going to only sell you and give you what they're good at, not necessarily what you need as a company to elevate your growth and take you to the next level. They only have what they're good at. So their salesperson will only offer that. Or even if they offer all of that, all the other stuff, they're really good at one thing. And therefore, that's the thing that they really push. But right. And that's if you go with a full stack agency. Right. So a full stack ad agency has all these different offerings and they'll help you through it. But the majority of companies that can uh, can pay for a full stack ad agency, they already have a CMO on staff. 
right? Okay. Because yeah. Yeah. Have, sure. Yeah, because at that that point they have a CMO and they go, okay, here's where we need to move forward. But then you also have a lesser company that let's say lesser is in like full size, right? Right. So you have a smaller company that has a marketing director. Well, a marketing director, depending on title, could be very well versed, but maybe they don't have as much experience. So my background is psychology, and it's focused on growing an agency, having lived, breathed, and grown. And through that, now I offer the services typically to medium-sized to smaller businesses to help them get to that next level, to, for them to understand what do they need to do. I mean, I'll use just a quick, for instance, because you just brought this up. I have one client that I've worked with for about a year now. And when they came to me, they had a CMO. The CMO left. They needed someone to fill the void and, and basically handle a lot of items. About eight months into working with this client, it became very evident to me that they were good at what they did, but they weren't telling the story right. So some people have heard the statement of having have something good to say and say it well. And that's what they weren't doing. And it took a little bit of time because when I came in, they said, here's the direction we want you to go. But as I went that direction, it became very evident that they needed to tell their story different. So now we are in what I call the maturation process of laying the groundwork of saying it well. And then the next level will be say it often. Right. So it's just kind of understanding that an agency wouldn't be able to do that. An agency isn't going to be in house with the business owner to say, Hey, what's your vision? What's your real goal? And then have that maturation process of growth to say, here are the next steps for us to get to where that needs to be. Okay. And, and, and what's the difference between a, a fractional CMO and a marketing consultant? So typically a fractional CMO is going to actually put their hands on things and get it done. A marketing consultant is just that. They consult. They tell you, go do this, go do that. So a fractional CMO can just be a consultant. However, most people would engage a CMO to actually lay out the plan and then go execute the plan. So some clients will come to me and they have an ad agency. But think about this. Who holds that ad agency accountable? If you have an employee, who holds your employee accountable? That they show up on time, that they get the work done, that they're doing what they need to do at the level they should do it, right? This is why you have sales coaches. They don't do the sales, but they coach you. They consult with you. But a fractional CMO can either come in and hold someone accountable, like a sales coach. But oftentimes, again, I'm doing it as a fractional myself. I'm coming in and doing the work, not just telling you what needs to happen. I'm coming in and actually applying the methodology, create the methodology, apply the methodology. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, I think I'm seeing the, the difference now. So um, just like with a fractional CFO, you're, you're going to provide the, what the, the big boys or the big companies have, right. Um, in terms of the, the, capabilities, but at a fraction of the cost, because you're not doing it full time at that company. Right. Um, but, but you, you hold the ad agency accountable. You make sure that the strategy is, is connected with what the CEO and the other members of the C-suite, what they really need the message to be, and you help them craft that and then right. make sure that the ad agency or whoever it is that's actually carrying it out does it well. I liked the, 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 the idea of, you know, you're playing manager to those external yeah. Um, organizations that are that are doing the work. Yeah, I mean, oftentimes just to build on that quickly is uh, a business owner. When I when I teach a lot of conferences, I tell people business owners don't get in business thinking I'm great at marketing. They get in no. business thinking I'm great at X, right? But they don't know how to hold those people accountable. And part of it also can be that a fractional CMO can build a team based on what you need. A consultant can kind of do that depending on the consultant. But a fractional CMO can do the work while hiring the team, train the team, and then kind of push them forward into the direction they need to go. 
Got it. Okay. So, so what's your methodology? How, how did you, how did you come up with the methodology that you use, um, for, um, for, for being this, the, this fractional CMO? You know, I think methodology always has to grow and I hate to overuse the word, but it has to mature through a process and a time. And it, it's always evolving. And what I realized here even recently is that I've always done some process and there is a process that needs to happen. But one of my newer uh, creation of programs and platforms that is, that is a methodology and, and a focus is what I call the agile plan. And the marketing agile plan, as I put it together, has multiple steps based on principles that uh, buyers buy, why they buy. Because I, I tell people in conferences often, no matter what you sell, people buy based on three basic principles. One of them is advantages to ownership, then objections to owning whatever you sell, and then vendor selection. So these three levels, no matter if it's a stick of gum up to a car, a house, or anything in between, we all buy based on those items. Objections oftentimes is price, but it could be color. If the car, you don't have the car selection in the right color, you don't want it, right? There can be a ton of things, but that becomes part of the methodology. But again, that's psychology based. Like it's understanding that. Then you can go into different principles of the methodology, but the agile program is really meant to be a methodology and a focus for business owners. I literally had a meeting this morning with a new business and they are going through what we call a GTM go to market strategy because they're rebranding, but they're not really rebranding. They're going to market with additional products to what they do. And as we were talking through it, I explained the agile program to him and said, listen, when you start off, what you have to do is build your keywords. What words are you trying to rank for? So this is step one, understand what people are looking for and, and what you need to explain to them. You take those keywords and you move to part two, which is your strategic message, right? Your keywords go into your message, but inside your message, I have about seven main points, but I would say one of the most important ones is what we call the USP unique selling position. What is it that makes you more powerful, more strategic, a better option when it comes to vendor selection, when it comes to objections, what is it that you have that no one else has? And that can oftentimes be very difficult for someone to come up with. But once you go from keywords to your strategic message, now you place that strategic message through what's called tactical marketing. That's when you actually put ads into the marketplace and people can see those ads. But very quickly behind and as you do the tactical marketing, you have to have your brand style guide, making sure that everything comes together and that your brand matches, your color scheme matches, your messaging matches, and it elevates, it grows through that process, right? And then we go to budget. What are you gonna spend? And that's tied, tied closely to tracking your ROIs and setting KPIs. Sometimes business owners, they don't know. Even big companies I've worked with and do work with, they don't know the right KPIs to have or what their budget should be. They'll look at me and say, what should my budget be? You tell me, and I'm going, no, you tell me. Because if I come in and go spend $5,000 and they go, I don't have 5,000, there's a little bit of a disconnect. So there is a little bit of a dance there that you have to work with somebody to understand. But again, that kind of goes back to the difference of a fractional CMO versus an agency. Who's going to make that determination of that budget, right? So that's the agile program just simplified. There's a lot more to it, but, but that kind of gives you a little bit of a picture there. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, what I'm hearing is, you know, it's, it's, it's a three-step three-step process, right? Where you, where you, you figure out what are the, what are the words Right. And then and then it's, you know, how do you make that into a, a, a message that resonates as they as the as the potential buyer goes through those those steps. Right. And then finally placing, figuring out how to place the ads and where to place them. And and, and, and it, did, did I get that? Is that? Yeah, I mean, there's multiple steps, but yes, those are the first parts. Right. So what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, then getting it to market. Right. 
Right. But then once you have it to market, how do you know if it's successful or not? Oh, yeah. There's Those, your KPI. There's, your, there's your ROI, right? Then your KPI, right? Right. You have to set the KPIs to know your key point indicator. I mean, I'll give you a, a real live, for instance, I wanted to test something on Friday and this was just three days ago. And I went out, I created a landing page with a small funnel behind it. And I spent a hundred dollars on paid ads in a very small little radius. I wanted to see what I would get. Spent under a hundred dollars. I got 131 clicks or 130, yeah, 131 clicks and 87 people scrolled further down my page. So within that, I got zero traction and I went back and I analyzed why that happened. What was it that didn't go right? And there's a lot of ways to track that, but that becomes your KPI because I didn't really know what my budget should be, but I had an idea. I ran a small budget to identify what could be broken before spending a massive budget. So that becomes a new methodology called test before you invest. Try something a little bit before you jump all the way in and just go for it, right? So again, the, there's a lot of methodology that at least I work with that is, again, psychological of just why buyers buy and why business owners need to be careful where they push their chips into. Try just a little bit, tip your toe in the water, then we can come back and work at a deeper level, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so can somebody implement this agile plan themselves without you? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, I give it as a free resource, by the way. So on my website, people can go right out and see the agile plan from top to bottom and exactly what you should do all the way to the unique selling position, to the methodology that I talked about, um, you know, and, and every step of the way it lays it out for them. I'm a believer of give people all the information and let them do it. And, you know, for me, my best client is one that goes, I tried it and I don't think I hit the mark. Can you help me? Then I'm like, yeah, absolutely. But I also believe that if someone, if I can help someone grow to that next level and they use my methodology, it's my belief. And I've seen it work that they'll come back to me and they'll go, okay, I grew now I need your help and I've seen this work. And then they come back and they go, Hey, let, let's do something together. Can we bring you in? And then I go, yeah, great. Let's, let's, let's see what happens. You know? That's great. Now, so you talked a little bit about your ideal client. I'd like to hear a little bit more about, you know, what, what, what's the, what's the best, uh, what, what's, what's a great client for you? How do you, how do you, and how do you find them? Yeah. So the, the best client is a little bit of what I think every, person out there that hires an agency or a marketing consultant or a fractional CMO. It's my belief that every business owner should know enough about it and have the right KPIs that they set. Don't let the agency set it for you because they're going to control the narrative. But if you can set the right KPI, that's really important. So my best client and the clients that I almost, almost insist on working with is someone that understands at least the basics of what I'm doing and why, why it's important, why it's relevant to them, and what is going to happen. What is the proper expectation? That's one reason why my average client stays with me more than five years, because we set the proper expectation. We understand what is going to happen and what should happen. And then we talk about what the agility is of changing the process as needed along the way. So that's a little bit of what that looks like. So again, full circle, it's just an educated or someone that's willing to be educated on the core principles of what we're trying to achieve and why. And I give that, I give that away for free every single day because it's just, to me, it's good business practice. It's just, let me give information I'll go do the work, but at least understand why I'm doing the work. And, and if I'm being paid, then why you're paying me, right? To kind of walk down that road. Okay. So if, if uh, I think the other thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is, is you have a, you have an ebook. Um, I do. Yeah. What's, so, 
what's what's that about? And 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 uh, tell us a little bit about how folks can get a hold of that. Yeah, so I, I list the ebook for free on my website, um, and the book is really kind of the core points of writing marketing. It's really for that entrepreneur that's just trying to get their feet going. They're trying to understand what they should do and how. So there's different sections of the book. Uh, some of it is psychology based of, you know, why buyers make decisions when they buy advantages, objections, vendor selection. Then there's other parts of the book that talk about writing the marketing and how you do it. And there's actually a template that'll help you step by step write that content. Chapter one actually starts out and it says, what to look for from an ad agency like what expectations should you have and how do you make a decision on an ad agency what questions you should ask them so there's a lot of great information especially if someone's trying to get it going but i will say this my book is about 86 pages it's a quick read because what i didn't want to do is create a bunch of, bunch of fluff and filler where someone's reading a book and it takes them three days or four days this is a book that if you're a quick reader, you can read it in a couple of hours, but it does take two or three times to read to really understand how to apply the items. But yeah, that's free on uh, on one of my websites as well. Great. So if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to, to reach out? So the best way really is to go to jrcmo.com. That stands for Josh Ramsey, Chief Marketing Officer. So jrcmo.com. And on there, I offer a free two-hour consultation. So anybody wow. that wants to chat for two hours, I ask that you fill out a short business evaluation. And then from that business evaluation, it gives me enough data that I can go do some quick research on who you are, what you've been doing, what your business is. Uh, and it just allows me to come in with a little bit more knowledge on on what that looks like. So, yeah, that two, that free two hours, I feel like you can't really know someone in 20 minutes. So I put two hours out there to really be able to understand you know, who they are and, and what brought them to that level, that point of us having the conversation. Wow, that's 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 great. Um, a two hour consultation. That's that's a really generous offer. Like so. I said, I've. You know, my business since the, the mid 2000s, a big reason that I would say that things have grown and done so well for me has really been that I love I love the humanity of giving back to people and helping them grow. That's really where my heart is. I always ask in the conference, hey, what does Google care about? And everyone says money. And I said, Google doesn't care about money. They care about the user experience because they know that if you have a great user experience, what's going to happen? You're going to come back. You're going to keep working with them. That's why Google will probably never go away because you don't go to Google, do a search and not find what you want. It may take you two or three times. <laughs> yeah. But you're always going to find what you're looking for. Right. And that's why they've been such a great search engine. So I've just modeled the common sense of help people. Right. It's just the right thing to do to give them the information and let them make an educated decision on what's the next step. What does this look like? That's great. And that concludes our show. Thanks to our guest, Josh Ramsey. I hope you've learned something about what the heck is a fractional CMO. I know I did. This is Dr. Stephen Kirch of Profit Minds. Make sure you catch us again next time on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple and Google podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Of course, I'd appreciate a good review on any of those platforms. Thanks again for joining us.